What's up, guys? Today, I want to talk about the most, actually, the only rule for having girlfriends, wives, dating chicks. And it is it is really, truly, at the end of the day, it's the only rule you need. The problem is it's pretty complex. So people can spout this rule off and you think, hey, I got an ABC three minute video told me to do this. But you'll find yourself not doing that looking back in your life. And that's because it's not, it's, it's being spouted by somebody who doesn't really understand it. And I got to tell you the truth. There are actually very few men who understand this rule. And you're going to understand why there's so few men. Even though it's the most glaring and truthful rule that you could ever have for men and women. The problem is, well, there's a lot of problems. So I'm going to get into those. So you, you will fully understand it's not that you're going to do this. I don't know, but you will understand. And that is my goal of this video. And I, I have faith. Like I'm a positive, optimistic guy. I believe that when, well, when intelligent men see the truth, even if it's difficult, and it might take a while, it might take years even, but after a period of time when a man has seen the truth, it changes him. And it's like, it's, it's very difficult to kind of be the same. It, it really is. It just changes you where you just, before it was just, you didn't even think about it. You just did it, right? So that's my goal with this one. So it's going to be difficult. And this, when I say like guys don't follow this rule, you have to have so much of your shit together to follow this rule. That's one of the problems, right? And there's a lot of tricks involved and, and complications that will confuse you and your mentor because people just... People that don't have a lot of experience with women, they will not be able to grasp this rule. Okay? They will not. They will not. I have one exception to that, and that is the antisocial type. The antisocial type will understand this rule, but at the same time, they have nothing to offer you. There's nothing to emulate. It's like a mentally ill person who is has no fear of anything and doesn't have any understanding and just runs into war. Maybe maybe he's very successful several times, right? But eventually, of course, he gets taken out. But he didn't uh, feel anything. It looks successful, but it's not. Because, because as a man, you need a rule that can work in real life. Yeah, you need a real man when you're going to sleep, things that turn south, life is hard. You need something that you can understand and implement despite your own internal pulls, you know, the pulls and, and, and the pressure from everybody outside you, right? But if you understand the rule totally, you will, this is an absolute gem. This understanding this rule, I, I really, I'm making this video because I don't think anybody, I really don't in history has ever really explained this rule. So if you're looking for some really heavy stuff that is very, very, very true and very, very powerful, uh, listen on. Yeah, this is the episode for you. So, okay, let's see. Where do I start? I'm going to kind of wander because there's so much here. You know, I've, I've watched um, a bunch of documentaries and movies about pimps, right? And uh, the reason why I watched them is I wanted to see if there's anything uh, that they were doing that I could learn from, right? Not, not, in, not in the uh, negative sense. I don't want to pimp people out or anything like that. But th- it's, it's like studying war. Okay, you don't want to go to war. But you want to understand it, right? You want to understand so that if something happens, right, at least you've seen the extremes, right? You've, you've thought about it. I think everybody understands this. We watch videos that we're not going to go implement in our lives, right? But that understanding often brings surprising insights in our lives. And that's why movies are popular, is you could have somebody who is a terrible person. And yet, yet we learn from that. We learn from their mistakes, Right. We learn from different things, right? Things that they see that other people don't see, right? And we, we might learn something like, you know, you see these days people, you know, petting, you know, wild bears and stuff. And then eventually, you know, it looks pretty cool. A couple Instagram posts and then you read that they passed away, right? So you learn from that. You think, okay, that, that bear is, you know, different than a domesticated animal, right? So... But at, at the moment, you can get confused. You know, you see all these people swimming with alligators and everything, and you're like, wow, well, it's, geez, that, why are we so, you know, against that? 
uh, and it is complicated, right? Life is complicated. But uh, so back to those documentaries. So I was watching them, and I watched um, what is the one? I recommended it on the channel once. Um, oh God, I can't even think of the name. Uh, it's a pimp the story of my life. If you just search that, you'll find it. And he was a violent character. And right away, I knew the guy's a simp. I knew he was right away. He wasn't the master I was looking for. Uh, when you use when you use violence as a man uh, against a inferior creature, it's very uh, poor judgment, very bad judgment. And in fact, in all my experiences, I have never, uh, ever, raised my hand uh, to a woman. And yet, I am a fucking dungeon master with girls. So, how did I achieve that? And part of it was, just for you guys that are starting here, is I didn't fall for this kind of social thing. Because what happens with guys, they get all excited, right? You see a thousand horsepower Dodge running over police cars. You're like, yeah, that's so cool, you know? And it is cool. But uh, the thing is, then, you then, then you know, where do you go from there, right? <laughs> it is the same with these guys. You know, you're like, oh, geez, if I could, you know, have these chicks make, you know, be a great idea, right? You know, so... Uh, let's see. So what was I going to say? So yeah, so he raises in. Why do I say that? How could I say that? Is that sour grapes? Is that, you know, is that me saying, oh, you know, he doesn't, it's like me, uh, it's like a guy will, uh, I don't know, he'll, you know, say Brady was such a bad quarterback or something, right? And, uh, but in reality, <laughs> the guy can't even throw the football, right? So is it that? Uh, no. Actually, it's because I know different roads okay um there's a there's a chinese saying it's like it's something like i, I don't remember i did the chinese uh, the way it's said in chinese but i've seen it in english now a few times but it's um don't how to fight a war without uh, firing a shot okay and that's what you want to do as a man you really want to with social interactions i know life can be very frustrating and people get road rage and they get frustrated the smarter you get at winning without firing a shot, you will realize that actually the power is there. Now, it's not that it's easy because it's easy to do something like drive your car into somebody, right? What do you do? Press on the gas pedal, right? It's not easy to do the other one. So maybe that's why, you know, people it's, are attracted to it. It's an easy solution. You can do it right now, you know. But I'm here to tell you that and don't be fooled. For guys that are, you know, maybe you've had 10 women or something, you don't have much experience, you know, you, you're going to see a guy like that and think, oh, maybe that guy is the right guy. You know, like I even hear people saying crazy things like, oh, in the old days, you know, a husband could do this and that was great. I don't agree with that in any way, shape or form, just so you guys know. And I think it was stupid then. I think it's stupid now. And I think it's a sign of a guy who doesn't know, doesn't have a good, um, he doesn't have... He doesn't have friends who know women. He doesn't have intelligent guys kicking ass. He doesn't have a role model. He doesn't have an, the idea that I'm giving you right here. So he just, what else am I going to do? You know, I'm losing, I'm losing, I'm losing, right? And you see this happen all the time. Guys make this mistake all the time. And they fall right into society's trap. Because that's the trap they got for you. The trap is you go into this. And when you go into this, then you suddenly are the bad guy and you are the bad guy right and 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 that's it the the full force of the law is going to come down on you like a fucking mallet mallet okay hammer down on you is that what you want do you want to be confused no do you want to look up to the wrong people no and i think i also blame rap music because a lot of rap music has promoted this. And and the interesting thing is the same rappers that were promoting this way of being, you know what I mean? Like there's a certain way of talking. And be, they promote that. And guess what happens? Okay, so think about this. Most, most songs, okay, successful songs, come from people. They write them when they're, it's like um, blues, right? You're not feeling good. You write this song. Everybody resonates with it. It gets super popular. Now, all of a sudden, you're not blue anymore. You're happy. You got money. You got a nice house. And you fall off the map because you're either writing fake songs 
or you are um, recycling the old songs, right? Or you're stealing someone else's songs, singing someone else's songs, or whatever, you're lost. Because you have no ability to change, okay? So for you guys that even in the back of your mind think that violence is a way to go, or in the old days it was the way to go, it is not and it never has been for guys. It is not. There is one rule. This is all you need. One fucking rule, okay? Is you have to be willing, and when I say be willing, I mean actually do it many times in your life, leave a woman okay now you have to leave a woman in order to be able to have any say so in what might happen after that when you are not willing okay when you're not willing to leave you are putting yourself into a position where you are now and forever seen as the weaker guy that's the problem. It's, it's kind of like, what would be a good example? Um, let's say there's a, there's a fight and uh, some, somebody's being you know, beaten up that shouldn't. Some, some, some you know, old lady in a wheelchair. And you're, in, you're too afraid to join in, right, to, to, to help her. You know, guy, whatever, old guy. The people that see you, people are not stupid. They know that's a decisive opportunity for you that's where you show who you are see because you fake it most of the time you're just walking around nothing serious has happened and then suddenly something serious happens and you can talk 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 after that okay you can go and start a huge campaign and raise money and everything but if you didn't act in that moment and you didn't act successfully or at least to the best of your ability People know who you are. That's why people hate these moments, because it's like, boom. You see who you are, other people see who you are. Now, I tell you this, never fear these moments. Okay, never fear. Because it will show you who you are. Okay? And that is a gift. Because if you know, right, that you're a pussy, right? At least you know. Okay? I'm serious. At least you know. You might say, oh man. No, no. It is better to know. It is better to know yourself. There are places you can go from truth. There's nowhere you can go from untruth. Now, like I'm the guy who jumps in, right? So it's easy for me to say, oh, everybody's a pussy. But, they're, but see, the thing is, we're all dealing with our own, what we're born with and our own experiences. And you can live with yourself. You are fine even if you're a pussy in that situation on this channel, okay? You don't need to be anybody, but you do need to know yourself. And by being honest with yourself as a man, amazing things happen. Okay, I'm not going to write a script for you, but I will just tell you that amazing things happen because you're facing the truth. There's something very masculine about that, facing the reality of things. Okay, a man can do that, even if it's really painful. A man can do that, and by doing that, you know you got it. You got this computer, and you're letting in information. And this information is not, like I said, it's not some daily take the dog out for a walk information. This is the core who you are. If you let that in, you have an opportunity. Trust me, you can change. You can become the hero and you can live with whatever you have. Okay. How would you live with whatever you have? How would you live if you knew that when things really go down, you're not able, you know, like let's say you start shaking and you can't move and you freeze or whatever. Okay. What do you do now? What do you do? I'll tell you what most people do. What do most people do? Most people will attack the people that are good at it. And they will try to destroy in any way they can anybody who's able to do what they're not able to do. And I will tell you right now, the secret, if you find yourself to be this type of person, is one, to admit it to yourself. Okay? You don't have to admit it to anybody else. Admit it to yourself. And then what do you do? 
Is it the right thing to do? Is it a good thing? Fuck yeah, it is. To do the, to, 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 to do the action. Men are protectors, right? What do you do? What, what can you do? Think about it. Don't destroy the guy. You fucking tell the guy the truth. That's what you do. You say to the guy, you say, you know what? When it gets down, when it gets hard, when it gets like that, life and death, I freeze. I don't know what to do. I'm frozen. I completely wimp out. And I saw you. And I was amazed. Because when he did that, you go into the details. When he did that, you did that. And that was very appropriate, you know. Part of, part of being a hero, which I talked about. We're going to talk about more at the summit. Part of being a hero is not going overboard. It's like those old karate movies, man. Karate. They always, you control. And you come back with a measured appropriate response in order to disarm the situation or whatever is necessary okay in a war obviously it's different depends on the situation you might have to neutralize somebody obviously if you're if they're trying to neutralize you but here's the thing is when you take a breath right now just take a breath and lose the fear of what you will do in that situation. Lose the fear. Because now you know that whatever happens, you are going to be fine. Because you're going to find out who you are and whatever that is. Okay? Now keep in mind, one situation doesn't mean who you are. It's like, it's a big, 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 big sign. But it's not the whole thing. You, you, have, you have second chances. You see this often in war. Guys will freak out on the first battle. And then once they learn how to, you know, they're frozen in the foxhole. And the guy comes down there and he's like, look, look, just shoot one shot. Just aim over there. Just just aim. And he shoots it in the air. You're like, yeah, yeah, okay, good. Aim down, aim down, aim down. And the next thing you know, the guy's like a fucking total beast, right? <laughs> he just somehow got over it. And it was that really loving mentor in the moment who guided him through that fear. So there is that. There's that hesitation where you are the guy, but you're just frozen and you need somebody to say, hey, just, you know. I mean, obviously the guy's got better things to do at the moment, but does he? Does he have better things than turning you into a fucking beast? Probably not, actually. You know, probably not, because you got to be on his side a lot, right? And if he turns you into a beast, he's going to be fucking grateful as fuck, believe me. That's how men are. When you find... When you find your hero within and somebody showed you and turned you 100, you went from the doghouse to the penthouse internally, not on the news, not in the TV, just internally, you will be so fucking grateful because he saw in you and he guided and he didn't make fun of you. And that's why I don't make fun of simpy guys. Okay, this is this is all about simps this episode. Okay. So, what's called simp? I don't use the word. I'm not big on that behavior. I'm not big on that word. And I'll tell you why. And you'll see after this episode. You'll understand a lot about me in this episode. Okay. So, what is the... The rule is that you have to be willing to leave. And it's such a strange rule because... Again, I'm going to be bouncing around on this one. You'll see the full picture in the end. Don't worry. Um... So why do, you, why do you have to leave? Why do you have to be like, why is that the only tool? It's the only tool because it's not that it's perfect. It's not that it's always going to work out. It's not that Ronin Man's got a 100% gold-plated rule that works every single time because it's not that. And it's not the rule that works because it works everywhere else. It doesn't work with most things. If you leave your job, you're done, Right? If you leave your country, they're not, they're not begging you to come back. Nothing is going to happen. You're just leaving, right? And what was probably somewhat of a commitment, you know. That's another trouble with guys is, is relationships. Girls get commitments out of you, right? And then, then you see the truth. You're very unhappy with her behavior. And then you're in trouble. That's why I don't make commitments, okay? That's why you don't make commitments, right? Because it's dependent on the other person's actions, Okay, you're totally there if the actions are good, but if the actions are no longer good, you're no longer there, right? 
Okay, so leave a woman. Okay, let me talk. About, I guess the best way is just talk about myself. So many times I had situations in my life, uh, women over, uh, and they were acting in a way that wasn't acceptable. And you know, you know what un- unacceptable is. I'm not. Don't 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 come up with some terrible scenarios. I mean, just like it's just unacceptable. Like unacceptable means you wouldn't choose it. Okay, you wouldn't choose if you knew this was going to happen. You wouldn't choose to invite her over. Okay, so suddenly she's just bitching or whatever the fuck is going on. She said she was going to go, and all of a sudden she's not. Blah blah blah. You know, or you're at a party or something, and she calls you, and she's like, "Come home, baby. I got an emergency." You know. No, 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 no. Okay. But how can you follow that rule if you don't follow the first rule is to be willing to leave? So what is be willing to leave? What is that in real life? Okay. Um, being willing to leave it means a lot more than that. But there's no other words I can... There's no words in the English language for what I'm trying to say. Because you actually do have to leave most of the time. And sometimes it's a tragedy. Okay? So, for example, a girl's not being good. Right? And you don't want to put up with it. And you're really upset. You're like, this is upsetting, right? What do women want to do? Women want to talk about it. Okay? Talk, 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 talk. Talking doesn't work with girls. Talking works with guys. Okay, women talking doesn't work. That's the funny thing. They want to talk, but it doesn't work for them. They'll never change their behavior. But it works for guys because you can guilt a guy. You can say, "Oh, you know," come up with a bunch of logic, and the guy will be like, "Oh, yeah, I guess maybe you know you got to. Yeah, maybe I should you know do this thing. I uh, you know," and then the guy will will be swayed by logic, and women know that, so they'll use logic on you. Okay, but logic doesn't work on them because they'll say, well, that's not how I felt, right? So people focus on that as if uh, they're making a mistake, girls are doing something dumb or crazy. They're not. That's actually smart, okay, because what they're doing is not doing what you want. They're outsmarting you, okay? That's the key thing is, 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 is guys are sitting there complaining, right? But what they should be doing is looking at it themselves, because they're getting beat, okay? The chess game is going the other way. And yet, they are acting like, oh, you know, complaining about it. All, all, all she has to do to beat you is to say, I didn't feel that way. Or I felt this way. And then the guy goes into logic, well, I meant this, I meant this. And it just falls apart, right? It's, it's that's the thing. Girls are beating us, okay? You have to learn to defend yourself. You can't win with words, Words will not work. They won't. And physical doesn't work. You know, like I said before, so far the podcast has been about that. Any kind of violence, any kind of threat, none of that works. And words don't work. So what the fuck do you do? Words don't work. Physical action doesn't work. And I mean don't work. They don't work. Okay? Don't use things that don't work. Okay? Don't use the toilet plunger to clean a swamp. It doesn't work, right? I'm not saying it works some of the time. It doesn't work, right? It's ineffective. So what do you do? What is, what can you do? This is what frustrates guys because they always go into words or action. Neither one works. There is, however, there is one thing you can do and that is to leave, okay? Now, I'm going to go into details about this because you need to know what I mean. I mean, I, I, a lot of guys, so many times I see comments and they're like, I used your black book, you know, idea here and it worked. And I'm like, that's not at all what I was saying. You know, it's like, be careful what you think you know. So I'm going to get into what I mean. Okay. So the girl comes over and you were going to have a good time and suddenly it's just chaos in the house. Just whatever reason, doesn't matter. It's very uncomfortable. It's not fun. It's not what you thought. And you wanted to have a nice, uh, let's say, romantic weekend. Right? I'm thinking of a particular situation right now. 
And then I just realized, I, went, I thought, you know, the girl was very pretty. Okay, this was what made it difficult. And there's a lot of things that make it difficult. But this one was very attractive. Very, very attractive. And she had come a long way. So she had spent uh, probably $600 to be there. Okay, she got her suitcase. You know what I mean? She's pretty. She's very pretty, right? That's even worse, right? She's got a cute suitcase. She's just sitting there. She smells good. Everything's on the outside looks great. But it's just not... Uh, it wasn't fun. It wasn't fun. And that, now we had already fucked and everything. We had fucked like crazy the night before. This is like Saturday morning. So I think a lot of guys would just put up with it, right? Because they say, well, fuck, this chick is like super hot, right? And she was. Super hot hair, very natural, shiny, down to her, pretty much down to her ass. I don't remember if it touched her. I don't think it touched her ass, but it was down there. And it was it was just the classic best type of Asian hair there is. The silky, you know, turn your head, flows around like a like a like a shampoo commercial. Like a fake shampoo commercial, but in real life. And big smile, you know, everything, right? And so all of a sudden I'm realizing this sucks. Like this sucks. So I'm like and, and, and as you get better at this rule, you're going to start to feel these things more. Because what you're doing now, this rule is so complex because you're covering up your own frustration because you know there's nothing you could do. All you can do is use words and that's just going to make her fight back and beat you, which you know. Right? There's one way you can win. There's no way she can beat you on this one. No fucking way. She can cause damage, but she's not going to beat you on this one. Okay, so I just kind of came to my senses and like I often do, you know, I kind of went to the bathroom in my mind, you know, where you close the door and you're by yourself and just thought, is this what I signed up for this weekend? And I, there, and I was like, no, I thought this was going to be, it was a super nice day. It was beautiful weather. And I was like, fuck, I was like in such a good mood. And all of a sudden it's just bad fucking vibes, you know? And, I, and there was nothing going on. It wasn't, I hadn't done anything. It was like, it was just bad vibes. It was like chaos, you know? She was kind of unleashing her feminine chaos or whatever. It had nothing to do with me. It wasn't like I did anything or we had an argument about a fight or anything. It was just, you know, that kind of thing, right? So I was like, okay, because you got to look at yourself. Maybe you did something. If you did do something, then don't fucking do it, right? But in this case, it was just this kind of internal chaos and frustration with whatever she was going through, right? So I was like, okay. All right. So I got a good vision of this thing. And I got the, I got the wisdom here. I can see what's going on. This is just trying to start a fight or something. I don't know. Some kind of chaos. And, of course, she had flown up to see me. So what am I thinking? I got to go through these things because you're going to go through these things. Well, I had never kicked a girl out who had flown to see me and was staying at my place. Okay. Because I knew that that's a big deal. She had flown to see me, taken the Shinkansen or whatever, the train from the airport, came to see me. Uh, not the Shinkansen, whatever that high-speed rail is uh, to Shinjuku. And, you know, and I was like, fuck, if I do this, because this chick is hot. Okay, she's like, she's the type of girl, I'm not saying she's the hottest in the world, but if she put on her thumb, there wouldn't be more than two cars that went by without picking her up. Okay, that's the kind of girl. Two cars, that's it. Maybe one car wouldn't, the second car would, right? So, so I knew that if I throw her out of the house, she's going to be very unhappy, right? And I know that uh, it's easy for her to get another guy. And I know that she probably won't fly up again. And I know that there's going to be <laughs> a lot of frustration and anger from her, you know. And, and, and you know, she could tell the story to people. And even you might agree, you know. Fuck, I flew up to see this guy. And he threw me out. And didn't have any place to go, you know. And this girl had money, so she had plenty of places to go. But... Uh, I just thought, you know, is this what I signed up for? No. No. This is not good. And I realized that if I let this go on, because she had never been like this before, this one. And I was like, if I let this go on, guess what's going to happen? And guess whose fault it is? I was like, I cannot let this go on. So willing to leave me means no matter what the consequences. And again, for normal guys. So guys who can bond with people who are healthy 
right? That's why it's difficult. If you're a psychopath, it'd be easy. Oh, get out of here, you know. I don't mean you, you know. But the problem is you have feelings, right? And you can think these things through and you're like, fuck, it's not easy to get a girl this hot, which is true. And that's one of the things you have to be willing to let go of, okay? And so I decided that I was going to uh, leave. And I said, uh, you know, long story, I got her out of the house and we went down to the station and I came up with an excuse to leave. And I just left. And then I took a train my hours away to Tokyo. I took like three hours. Like, I, cause I could see my own, I knew that I was, I'm weak, you know. So you're gonna call me a million times. You'll be standing by my door tonight. I knew. So I called my friend. I said, hey, can I stay at your place? He's like, fuck yeah, come out, man. We'll go, dude. You know, shoot, uh, we had these BB gun things, plastic BBs, you know, in Japan. He's like, let's go hunt each other. It's be fucking fun. Last time you shot me in the ass. Uh, no, I, no, he shot me in the No, no. He shot me in the face. That's right. So then I, as payment, because I shot his face, um, what it called? It um, swelled up, you know, because cause he was running behind me. I was running up this riverbank, and I just aimed behind me. I was running full speed and hit him right in the face. No glasses, of course. <laughs> Luckily, it was just below his eye. But his face swelled up. I felt bad. So I said, look, you can shoot me in the ass, you know. So I turned around. He shot me. Man, that fucking hurt. I, <laughs> that fucking hurt. <laughs> We're going great friends, right? So anyway, so I, I said, okay, I'm coming out. So the reason why I did that, why did I do that? Why is I telling that part of the story? It's because I know we're all weak. And I didn't want risk. You know, I didn't want her screaming there at night. I knew she was going to be there. Because she didn't know where I was going. She thought I was just going to go get, you know, something and come back, right? I was like, nope, nope. When I make a commitment, I got to follow through. I got to follow through, you know. You got to do it. You got to do it. No matter the consequences. So I go to his house, get a call. <laughs> this is what you got to be ready for. Okay. You want one rule that works? You got to be tough, okay? You got to be tough on yourself. Tough on the whole situation, you got to be a man of your word, and no matter what happens. So she calls me. Guess what she says? She said, I'm on the airplane going home, and there's this very nice American guy next to me, and we're friends now. I can hear him laughing. And, and so she probably fucked him in the bathroom. That's the kind of girl she was. She was, like, totally up for stuff. She was kinky as fuck and, and hot as fuck. So dangerous combo. Um, and I was like, oh. And I, I responded. See, the thing is, you gotta be, you gotta be so, you gotta go deep inside yourself to be able to follow this rule. This is why so few guys know this rule. And I, I, I just responded. I said, "Oh, that's great. I'm glad you're safe and everything. Hope you have a good trip home. See you later." Click. No anger, no frustration. Guess what? Guess what happened next? Oh, uh, I hope you, I hope you got that part. So, in just in case it got, looks like it might have gotten cut off. Uh, basically, she called me from the airplane, and she was with another guy already. <laughs> and he's laughing in the background, because he's, like, so happy, right? He probably fucked her in the bathroom. That's the kind of girl. She was so up for stuff. She was a, a voyeur, and she was hot as fuck. She was twisted as fuck. Anyway, that guy's stoked. Let's put it that way. And, but I realized he wasn't laughing at me. He was laughing because he's happy. He's like, fuck, this is awesome, right? So, anyway, so... I didn't respond. All I said was, hey, you know, that's great. I'm glad you're home safe and everything. Have a good trip home. Bye. They hang up the phone. Took all the air out of her sails completely. Five days later, she calls. She's totally nice. She's like, I totally want to see you. And I said, yeah, well, what about next, you know, two weeks from now or three weeks from now or something? <laughs> I made her wait. I was like, yeah, what about three weeks now? She's like, perfect. That's perfect. I'll, I'll plan everything, and I'll be up there, and let's go do that thing you wanted to do, that fun thing, and blah, blah, blah. You know, I forgot. She, I think I can't remember what she did. She might have taken me to Disneyland. I, she took me somewhere I wanted to go. I can't remember where it was. Where was it? Fuck. Is it island? I can't remember. Anyway, we're somewhere fun, and it was expensive. Right. So, so um, I hung up the phone, and I was like, oh, my God. Thank you, God. Thank you. She didn't mention the other guy, and I could tell by the sound of her voice, because I knew this girl, that it didn't continue with that guy. It was just a one-time thing to see if it could affect me. It didn't affect me. And she was completely back. 
she wasn't like hinting at anything. And I knew this girl. The girl actually did like me a lot. So I knew that she wasn't going to put... And she knew it was me, too. So if she would have done anything, she would have been toast. See, the thing is, when I say always be willing to leave, that doesn't mean that you're a black and white guy. Okay? It depends on how things roll and how she it affects her. Now, most of the time, it doesn't work this way. So most of the time, you do have to take a black and white line. She did it just right. She waited just long enough. She said the right thing. I could tell she was sorry. She was like, not going to do it again. I could tell she never did. She never did it again. And we had a great time the next time. And we never talked about it. Do not talk about problems with women. It is the worst idea. It will only work on you. Never will work on her. So if you're having a problem with yourself, like, like for example, what could be something you'd want to talk to somebody about? Let's say you're having trouble getting work and you're not, you're just having trouble being motivated. You might, she might be able to help you with that. Really. So changing yourself doesn't mean always in her image. It could be something that's mutually beneficial, like you getting a kick-ass job. I've had women help me. You know, they'll say, well, look, why are you doing that? You're not helping yourself by doing that. You just, you don't need to watch another movie, you know? And I was like, fuck, she's totally right. What am I doing? You know what I mean? So... It's not us versus them. It's not black and white. There are things that you need to fix that women can help you with. Women can help you with a lot of things, actually. Now, I'm talking the type of women that you've trained, which what I'm talking about now is training women. This is the key thing. This is the only tool you have, and you have to use it like an expert swordsman, okay? You don't take this thing out. And, I don't know if you know, but uh, there's a guy, Cyrus, on uh, Trailer Park Boys. And he, he has his gun and he always pulls it out. And then finally, Julian calls him on it, right? And it's like a hilarious scene. But until then, everybody just cowers when he pulls out the gun, right? It's like you can't be like that. You need, you need subtlety. You need intelligence. You need decisiveness. And you need skill for this rule to work. Truly, you do. No fucking around. You need to be able to wield it with the utmost wisdom and power. Okay? So that's why I'm trying to give you many examples. Now, turning that girl around might seem like a normal thing for me. But it wasn't growing up. I learned these things like you're learning now. I had to go through the mistakes. Okay? It wasn't something that I was born with. I'm teaching you stuff that you can integrate where when you are 20 years older, this will be you, okay? Just like I wanted to be something when I was younger. I wanted to be, you know, the Asia rat who could survive anywhere, who could make anything happen in Asia, in any country, and learn the languages and just be a man completely fluid in Asia, in Asian business, in Asia relationships, in politics, To be a guy who knew what the fuck was... A a useful man with skills and with a Western background, which is a valuable combination, actually. Because you have this outside view, right? Inside of... On top of of a very valid inside view, right? That's the balance I wanted, and I got it. I finally got it. It took time. It took years. So you will also get your ability to manage relationships over time. If you understand this rule, because this is the only rule you need to understand. There is nothing else. I'm, I'm totally serious. I really want questions. This will be a series because I know there's going to be somebody smart enough to ask a question that's going to tip me off on another video on this topic. Okay, so let me think, what, can I, what else can I think of now? So be willing to leave. It, it actually means sometimes mistake okay this is the hard part is sometimes when you um when you do the right thing it doesn't work out okay that is a hard part of rules is you do the right thing and the people don't understand what you're doing and it doesn't work out and maybe years later they talk to you they're like well if i would have known that's what you meant i wouldn't have done that but i didn't know but then you realize like sometimes there's no way to explain things you have to be willing 
Okay, this is the key part of this rule, is always be ready to leave. You have to be willing to leave even when they don't understand and even when it fucks up a good thing. What does that mean? Okay, that means that some there's different levels of intelligence of every creature in the world. Dogs, cats, mosquitoes, bears, humans. Every human, there's different levels of knowledge and there's different levels of intelligence, right? Sometimes they just don't have the database to understand. So you have to be willing to leave, okay, even though this person won't understand it, will respond inappropriately, and will later regret it, and you will regret it. You have to be willing to let some things fall through the cracks. That's the hard part. It's because sometimes they won't understand. Now, how do you make them understand more? How do you, how do you limit this risk? The way you limit this risk is by living your whole life this way. So you're totally integrated. That if somebody does something that's unacceptable, you don't sit around and complain about it. You don't berate them, talk behind their back. You don't participate. And you're no longer there. Now, when you integrate this very powerful, this is a very masculine um, trait. When you integrate this tool into your life, it will start to show in other ways. With friendships, somebody's unacceptable. Everybody else is there. Why don't you talk to him? Why don't you? No. It's like, for me, nope. Nope. It's like, I'm no longer there. Like, and, and, and this works in, with, with me now. If you do something unacceptable, you'll just find that I'm not around for a while. <laughs> I just, I'll just be on the other side of the room. I'll just be not there. I won't be berating you. And I won't be fighting you. I just won't be there. Okay? Because it's unacceptable to me. And I realize that you are doing this thing, committed to this thing. I'm not saying you're a bad person or good person or anything. It's just that I realize the ineffectiveness and the waste of energy in trying to change you. And if you're doing something unacceptable, just, I'm not going to be there. I'm not going to be talking you know what I mean like that's just what's going to happen you become this person who can do this so effectively and so smoothly they can be on the other side of the room and completely baffled because you never attack them but they look back at their what they said and what they did and they'll and, and this is the problem it's based on intelligence and self-reflection if someone's not of it, not capable of self-reflection, they won't be able to change and I'll be around even less, okay? And less and less until I'm never in their vicinity. Maybe move to another country, right? It's because I realize I give people chances. I'm not saying, I am not saying black and white here. I am saying that your tool for change is to leave and not be there. If people don't understand what you're doing, then they're not going to respond properly. And you have to be ready for that. Not everyone's going to understand my rule. And they're going to come up to me and attack again. And really, you're getting close to three strikes. You're out at that point. And Rona Man's not going to be around anymore. And that's the way I live my life. If you live your life in this way, and, and you will see, guys, this is such a deep rule. And I mean this with everything, your family, your friends, your job, where you live. You have to be willing to leave. And you have to be wise. And you have to be decisive. And you have to have like a plan B so that you can have the fortitude to follow through with this. Because believe me, this can be really fucking hard. Right? And never be the person who makes threats. The weakest person is the one who makes threats. The second weakest is the guy who goes through with it, who is violent. With me, my life is limited. My breath 
I only have so many breaths. I'm not going to waste my breath around an uncomfortable situation for no reason. It's like, nope, how many breaths do I want to be here? And I have a system, okay? So this rule, it can be broken all at once. And it depends on what the action is. There are certain actions that can be broke the rule all at once. But generally, as a rule, no. As a rule, I tend to give chances. A lot of guys in the Red Bull sphere would say, um, that girl on the airplane, you know she fucked another guy. And they could make a big, long podcast how that was the worst thing. And if you even think about it, it might seem to be. And it's if you don't know women. But if you know women, women are doing this to you right now. They're cheating on you right now. You just don't know it. See, for me, I know women are unfaithful. Go back and watch Marriage is Doomed. So even if I don't find out, I'm under no Cinderella Prince Charming complex here. I know women are unfaithful, and they'll be unfaithful at the drop of a hat with the right guy. Okay? So I have no illusions. So the fact that I knew about it, what most simpy guys do, will do is like, I, you should never let a girl do this or that. And they don't even realize, like, the girl's in my bedroom every night, right? It's just they don't know it, right? So what they're saying is, this is the simp logic. As long as I don't know about it, okay, it doesn't matter. They don't realize that women are very good at hiding things. See? So you need a rule whether you can see or not see. Okay? That's the key thing. Even if you can't see it, you have to be able to have a rule. Women are not trustworthy and they are not faithful. Okay? So the fact that she told me that, to me, as a player, was a sign that I knew. And I was right. I was fucking 100% right. This girl was totally in love with me. <laughs> I don't even know if she did fuck the guy looking back. But she was trying to get me jealous. Okay? That's fact. Now, whatever she did, I don't know. But she was trying to get me jealous. And when it didn't work, she fucking... Poof, she gave that up. The reason why women do things like that to you is because they know it works. With me, it doesn't work. It does not work. I am like... I am like the cyber truck, you know. You're shooting the bullets at me, and it's just like it takes a nuclear weapon. <laughs> it's, like, <laughs> it's because I've been through a lot, and I can see through the actions what they mean. See, when you can't see through the actions, and when you don't know the women isn't faithful anyway, okay, then you're going to think that your judgment is so important. I don't think my judgment's that important. I'm under no illusions that women cheat. There's a great song, actually. Uh, was it by the O'Days? In the 70s. Great song. And it's not, that, that is such a great song, the message. Is everyone, everybody plays the fool sometimes. And there's no exception to the rule. That is a great... You should go back and listen to that song. Because it's true. And I mean 50 Cent. I mean Drake. Everybody plays the fool. You gotta know that. The guy who catches a woman cheating and goes, you know, ape shit nuclear. He's the guy who doesn't know the rule. He doesn't know. Every girl he ever had was probably unfaithful to him. Now, maybe it makes him feel better that he didn't know. But in the end, what do you judge people by? You judge them by the truth. And weak men invite testing. Strong men do not. So the key thing with this rule is they have to know that you are the type of guy who would do this. And that is a very rare guy. In fact, it's so rare that she might not even understand it. She might have to test it because she, she might have heard about a guy like that but never seen it. And this is one of my, this is one of my Ronin spider's webs. Here's one of my fucking secrets that no one's heard. And this is something that blows girls away is when women date me, they'll hear my podcast or whatever, and they will say, this guy is, he thinks he's so tough. I'm going to test this guy out. And he's going to be, because they know guys are so weak inside. 
And I will tell you this, I don't even know how many women have tested me. And there is a point when they look at me, and I, this is not ego. If you integrate this rule totally in your life, this will happen to you. This is not a unique thing to me. I integrated this rule so deeply and so fairly. See, that's the other thing. I don't react, react emotionally. I'm very fair, okay? And also I'm very hard because I know. I don't tell them they're dis disloyal. I, I'm not going to stir up the hornet's nest. When you're raising chinchillas, you don't take a stick and rile the cage up. You want this, the fur to be nice, right? As they say in the predatory female. But I know that. And there's a point where girls will realize that you know women. You know women. They don't know how or why, but they'll be like, this motherfucker. And what happens with women is when they test me, I have had this happen many times. Like the alpha type chicks, they think... They, this is, this is, this is what I believe. I'm going to tell you as honestly as I can. They believe with all of their soul that their pussy is the most powerful thing and that there is not a guy who is normal, okay, not a psychopath, who's normal, who loves people, who bonds, who can resist the incredible onslaught of their full force of their femininity and their chaos and actions. And they think, they're like, this is just another one. I can get the richest guy in the world wrapped around my finger, right? What happens? There's a point when you reintegrate this rule fully and fairly. And I've had this happen many times. Women just look at me. They cannot believe it. They can't believe it. They're like, you're like the strongest guy I've ever met. And you're so fucking fair. You know, they use different words and they're just like, I can't believe it. Like, basically, I thought no man was able to be like this. And it's what they really want. Now, that doesn't mean they're going to stay with you. See, I'm not the Prince Charming here because I'm always ready to leave later. Even once they tested me and they respect me, that ain't enough. They have to stop doing that thing, whatever it is. <laughs> I'm still going to leave. Respect's not enough. Knowing me is not enough. Every single day, the guillotine is up. Okay? <laughs> and, 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 and believe me, at one point, they will tire because they want a man they can control. And in the end of the day, that's not me. So they will leave. And they will test the rule at the ultimate level where they literally don't give a shit anymore. Like, they will leave me, and they're, they're not trying to fix it. And they're not trying to test me. And it's hard when they really give up. Like, they go to, like, deep space, true zeros. It, it is difficult. Because you know, or I know, for myself, that if I would have just played along somewhat, she accepted me being strong, but there were certain things, she would have been there. And that looks good to people. People judge men by the women they have. Period. That's why guys compete for women. And the deeper part of this rule is you have to be willing for none of society to really think you're such a great guy. And it's actually because you are the greatest. It's, it's the craziest thing. It is the craziest thing. But society is so weak now. They have to respect the guy who has the, the good woman and, and the house and the car. And when you don't play along, you know, especially for a social guy, it's tough because you so want to be social and you understand the whole game and all you got to do is give in on these things and anything. And you know, you know, you know, it's like, I don't know. It becomes a life where you are the only one who knows your journey. And that's difficult for someone like me who's social. But it's the, it's the only real outcome of this rule. You will have respect. Trust me. People will respect you. And they will look at you like, that guy does not bend. Period. It's just the way it is. He does not care. And I truly, at a point for the last, I'd say, 20 years, 
where I don't care. I will not bend. Certain I just won't. I just fucking won't. I'd rather be homeless. And I tell people all the time. They're like, well, what about a job? What about your bills? No, you're not listening, okay? I will walk away. Well, then people won't. That is what is going to happen then. See? It's not just be willing to walk away. You're going to have to walk away from many things and many people. And you're going to have to walk away from situations where people come back 20 years later and say, if you just would have told me and everything. But the truth was back 20 years ago, they weren't ready to hear it. It was destined to die. I guess somewhat you got to believe in destiny. And the destiny is you as a stronger and stronger man who goes through life who is wise, who has total control of his emotions, who accepts good things in his life. You're not driving anybody away. It's just that you will not be manipulated, right? You're a great guy. You're fun to be with, but you refuse manipulation. That's just the way it is. And... You don't try to change the world. You just refuse to be manipulated. And I guess it goes down to the how I found freedom in an unfree world. Is that you look around you and you can, you know, a lot of guys, I can understand why guys allow themselves to be manipulated. You know, it, it's, it's, there's a lot of reasons why you would cave in. A lot of reasons, right? A lot of fucking reasons. But what do you want in your life? If you want the ability that I'm talking about here, you need to be able to live with whatever consequences come. And I'm not even getting into the good side of it because as you as a learner, somebody learning these skills, you need to know the hard part first. You need to know that, yes, it will work. No, people will not understand. No, it will not always fix things. No, you will not always be sure of yourself. No, you will not have the fortitude. You have to set up the logistics to be strong on this one. That's why I went to my friends three hours away. Because let's say it was like two o'clock in the afternoon. I think it was something like that. Something like two. I knew that by the time I got to his house, met him, this and that. At some point, the local trains were not going to run. And I wasn't going to be able to come back. So I set it up for myself. See? Because I know my weakness. This girl was very hot. And she was a great bone. And when she was being good. And I knew there was a good chance if I went back. She was going to already be in shape. But I felt like I had done a lot of small punishments. And I felt like I had to do a big one. And I think looking back I was absolutely right. It's kind of like a father. A father, father role is somewhat thankless. He is strong despite being hated. He is wise despite pressure to cave on things that don't seem like they matter. But as a logical man, seeing it all the way through, you know it is destruction of everything. It's termites. It's termites. You can't allow termites in your family house. You can't allow termites in your family of friends, your family of origin, your family that you built, and your family of workers. You can't allow termites. And you have to properly identify termites, right? You can't be around like this tight-ass, tight-lipped, anal fucking dude who's wrong. See, this is the fucking problem. That's why you need smart friends. The last thing I'll say on this is you have to be right. Okay? And the only way you're going to be right is by to keep learning. You cannot use this rule improperly. Because this can drive women to very, very, being very, very sad. I mean, I I have left women where they just didn't get it. You know, I guess I should talk about that. So there was one girl, very nice girl, very nice girl, 22, all smiles, this girl. Biggest smile you've ever seen. Just just light up a room. Really a fucking firecracker, this girl. I met her. She was fun. She was energetic. She was athletic. She was great boned. She was adventurous. She was humorous. She was fun to do things with cook or hitchhike or whatever she was up for whatever you know there were so many good things to her personality um and then 
I was with her and went through a lot of stuff, which I could talk about in another episode. But at the end, I I went from teaching English to head earning. And when I became a head earner, I was no longer free like I used to be. I couldn't just run away and be with her and this and that. And she was one of these really feminine girls who was very flighty, just kind of like, she was very light. The kind of girls I like, they can't read maps. I like girls that can't read maps. They're just so young and feminine. They're just like, they're very chaotic. Um, they pout, you know, like, I love all that stuff. That true feminine, I love that. Their faults, their good parts. She had it all, right. And, you know, I told her, I said, look, I said, you know, I said, baby, like, now I'm head hunting. I'm busy. I was working till three in the morning and I was so tired. I guess I had to be work. I had to be work, morning meeting at nine and with a suit on sitting in the office. And I was like across town. It was in Ichibancho in, in Tokyo near the uh, Imperial Palace. And I was like, fuck. I was like, I was like, baby, I was like trying to explain to her, like, I'm going to get rich. I'm going to make a bunch of money. That's what I'm going to do now. This is what I want to do. See, other guys, they say things and they don't do them right. See, for me, <laughs> I did become rich at that time. I became very successful. And that was what I was going to do. And I told her. I said, look, I'm going to... And this is the same kind of dogged determination. I don't try. I do. I'm going to get money. I'm going to make a bunch of money. And I'm not going to stop. And I told her. I said, look, I am a businessman now. I do not have time like before. And she was like, yeah, 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 but, but, but. And she just didn't get it. It was funny. She was like, she was a nice girl. She really was cool. But she just didn't, for some reason, I don't know if I didn't say it right, but she somehow didn't get it. And it kept going down and down. And she kept, you know, one day she um, she came by the office for lunch. And I said, I got to go back to work, you know. And she's like, why so fast? Like, we've only been here like a half an hour. I'm like, yeah, I only have an hour. And I get, had to walk from work. And we talked and we bought a drink. And now we're sitting here. I got to go back. And, and she was just like, really upset you know and she just didn't see it and I just thought it's so sad you know and I, I dumped her and she called me like six months later she's like I understand you know I, I was so dumb like I don't know why I was so blind like you had totally changed and I just it was so abrupt I couldn't believe it you were so playful and always having fun and always had free time and like suddenly you were just like the serious businessman and I finally understand that's what you're doing now and yeah and I see you doing it and I really respect that and I I really seriously thought about letting her back in but by that point I felt like I had moved on I was really focused on work even more than before now and I realized like that anything to take me off the track you know because I was starting to get traction I was starting to make money I was starting to close deals candidates were signing and so I just felt I felt inside myself I knew she was sincere I knew she was a good girl and I just knew also that she was the type of girl who likes a lot of time so she's saying that she wants me to be there but it's like she wants two things she wants me to be me but she also wants a guy who's always going to be home you know so she wants the kind of guy I think at the end of the day, she wanted a guy who worked nine to five, maybe a government job, and he would be there in the morning and be there in the evening. I don't know if she still wants that, but sadly, I had to let her go. And it was so hard, actually, because it was a sincere misunderstanding and she was a good person. But I could see it didn't, it wasn't a fit. She wanted a guy at that age around her more often. I don't know if she regrets it now. I have part of me regrets it because I, she was a fucking great girl and there's not that many great girls. If you saw this girl and were with this girl, you'd understand. She was, you know, somebody once, somebody said in a comment recently, it's like, the reason why I like Ronan's channel is because he had the choice to be blue pill. He had the choice to get married and he, with good girls and he didn't take it. And it like, they're basically saying like, I'm the true voice of Big Top because I'm the guy who, could have had it see if you can't have something it's easy to go against it i could have had it and i could have it anytime i want but i truly like this life i love this life and i love having women around too i love women i love the experiences i have maybe one of them will stick through all this stuff you know maybe that that'll be maybe there will be one i, I doubt it now at this point but you never know i might meet like a really sweet young one you know i could see that happening actually 
Oh yeah, one thing I would say. As you age, the strictness of your rules will change. So for me now, at my age, 50, I'll be 59 in a couple of days. If I had a 22-year-old that was super sweet, like Calorie, that one I was talking about, I would be a little bit more lenient. And the reason is just because it's so much harder for me to get a girl that quality at that age anymore. So you got to be realistic. If you're 65, you can't be... I just want to bring some realism so you guys can understand I'm really talking about a rule that works. But you, you, you do have to adjust as you age. Now, am I saying you have to break the rule as you age? That's the hard part. You can't break the rule, but you have to adjust. And if I do it, when I do it, if I do it, I will explain what I was thinking. I will explain the rule deeper because I follow this rule. That's not going to change. If I find subtle details of this rule that I can pass on to guys, especially older guys, I will be happy to do that. But I will be honest with you. Is that it changes. Your attractiveness changes. If you have money, millions of dollars, and you lose them, say a war happens, whatever, currency, hyperinflation, you will have to adjust your rules. So you do have to adjust. It's a, it's a, it's a magnet thing. You know, how strong is the magnet, right? So the rule is there. The rule has a bottom line. And at the same time, you have a value in life. Okay? You have a value. So the things you are capable of doing are different. So if you're old and rich, you're capable of some things and you're not capable of others. Like I could do a whole video about that. What you're going to put up with when you're old and rich with a younger girl that you wouldn't put up with. But see, at the end of the day, okay, at the end of the day, truth wins. Okay? And there is... There are valid reasons why you're going to do certain things. So I'm the, in a way, I'm the worst kind of speaker because sometimes I leave you with the unsureness of knowing that there's more to be learned. But I think, as we know with science, there's always another discovery to be made. And on this rule here, okay, of, of always be willing to leave and discipline and the difference between a guy who's grounded in the dust and a guy who isn't. It's, 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 it's so much more than the words I can even use. This is your essential rule as a man. This, is, this should be the fundamental rule of your life. Not just with women. I just realize it, it, it permeates every aspect of my life. Work, where I live. And, 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 and because I follow this rule, my confidence is unshakable. Because I don't break this rule. It's so simple. Go back and listen again if that makes if that's any if there's any confusion there. All right. So I'd love questions on this one. Any kind of subtleties, your very soul is at stake. You want to have a fucking soul? Follow this rule. Follow this rule. This very complicated, very difficult, essential foundation rule for your life and even the striving for this rule the knowledge of this rule will fundamentally bring out your strength as a man because you will align with things that work and you will disalign with things that don't on my last note here on the side why i hate motivational speeches it's because you're probably doing something you shouldn't be doing something you don't like that's why you need motivation when you follow this rule, you won't need motivation. Ponder that one. All right. Thank you very much.